see our level damage. So, just, oh, I can, I can. <laughs> man, I'm on the edge of my seat right now. Like, oh, wait, this could be a lot of damage right here. Oh, never mind. I <laughs> take it back. It's another cool. <laughs> wow. Vortex kick. Vortex kick. Arch is down. That that's game. Oh, wow. wow. That's game. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to WBEL Season 2, Week 8. Uh, joined as always, this time, not with Numero, but with uh, Mation. So, hey there, Mation. Hello. How's it going? Doing well. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Good to be back. <laughs> <laughs> so, with that, let's go ahead and just jump right into the standings. We have Surf Taco in first place with seven points. In second place, we have Ram9, Koshiho, and Kells with five points. In third place, we have Isvar with four points. In fourth place, we have Unhindered, Logi, and Alcor with three points each. In fifth place, we have Chase vs. All with two points. And then in sixth place, we have Funded with one point. So this is the second to last week. So uh, our points are pretty much locked in. Our placings are pretty locked in. I think at this point, we're just fighting for those last couple playoff spots. Uh, so. Uh, really interested to see how things turn out this week because uh, it will really solidify who's going to be in and who's not. So, especially I see a lot of those extra points still left on the table. So let's uh, see some hopefully some creative teams using some units we haven't seen yet. So let's uh, go ahead and jump into the matches. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, here we have on the right side, Chase vs. All's Brave Frontier, Sephiroth. Dea and Seymour going against all core. <laughs> Who's your daddy with Serges, Dario the Crystalborn, and uh, Rob? She uh, said, "Let's get into this match." Let's get into this match. Uh, Alcor's amazing pun aside, <laughs> let's. So we see katanas coming out from both sides. So with Alcor's side, we have both the Dario and the Rob. Uh, with Surges there, I'm guess masquerading as a katana unit, probably just there for the costing. Uh, but versus Chase vs. All, we have the full katana team with old school Sephiroth, Seymour, and Dea. Um, no apparent uh, elemental advantages aside from the uh, fire Seymour against the Surges, but oh, I mean, already damage starting with the uh, initial placement on the same side, so. Uh, yeah. And here comes Dio going straight for the tank uh, at Dario's uh, the Crystalborn, doing uh, minimal dam or no damage because of that shield. Uh, Sephiroth coming in and getting both the Surges and the Dario in an AoE. Rob coming in, uh, doing about 2k damage to Dea. Uh, and then we've seen what Dario has done in other matches. Let's see if he proves just as strong in this one, going for the Limit Burst, which can Ooh. Berserk and does Berserk. Uh, that might be big against the Dea. Um, here comes Seymour, though. Oh, and puts the Surges to sleep. Uh, then we have Dia, who's Berserk, but can't get enraged to do an attack, going behind Sephiroth. And then Sephiroth will Shadow Flare. It will hit both of them and finish off the Sleeping Surges. Uh, but you got a pretty healthy Dario and then a Rob sitting in the back. Triple Drain against it, doing good damage against the Berserk, Dia, and then healing back up to full. We've seen how dangerous that move can be. Rob coming in and finishing off the Dia, and big damage against the Seymour. Let's see if Seymour can retaliate. Let's see, he's going for Kongu. Uh, decent damage, uh, but <laughs> counter heal, that's going to negate that. Sephiroth comes in. Uh, very little damage against the uh, Dario. Uh, Looking good for Alcor. Uh, let's see if he continues that. 31 turns remaining. Uh, he does, uh, again, big damage against the Seymour, uh, who's up next and oh. still targeting. Oh, oh the Dario. If Sephiroth can avoid hitting the Dario, this might be big. Oh, oh he, he does, does a breathing technique. He was out of AP. Uh, Rob's up next. Uh, basic attack, so a lot of AP issues going on. Then we have Dario who can give Rob an unhappy ending. Takes away about half his damage. Uh, I believe that's a guaranteed hit move, so maybe he was evasive enough to but not evasive enough to dodge Seymour. So this turned around quickly with the charm, but now uh, we still got a pretty full health not charm Dario. Let's see if he finishes off. No, he was out of AP as well. Um, 
Seymour is uh, turning it around with an attack. Sephiroth's going to step into a Hell's Gate. Almost 3k damage, but Dario's still hanging on. But see, oh, they're both lapping him this time. Ooh. So let's see if they chain him down. Uh, they summon the Odin, so it's a going to be a slash chain continuation because it's a slash Esper. Let's see. 2k damage. He's still hanging in. Sephiroth out of AP again. Ooh. Uh, almost finishes him off, but Dario has about. Uh, well, 27 AP. Let's see if he could do... Uh, he does it, but he's still only at 900 HP left. But he gets to go again, but still out of AP. Minimal damage. It's going to be... It uh, looks like a little too rough. We're running out of turns here. And Sephiroth is able to finish him off. Um, almost went to turns. and uh, But Sephiroth was able to get it done before time ticked down. Chise, what do you think about that? <laughs> yeah, that was... Oh. Very crazy match with full of swings back and forth. Uh, I was about ready mid-match to just give a uh, play of the game to that Berserk because that was huge, letting, uh, not letting the Dea basically attack because she was uh, not in range to be able to do any auto attacks, so she wasted an entire turn. I thought that was going to just basically seal up the game for Alcor there, especially with how little damage the Dario was taking. But, I mean, it's easy to see what the actual play of the match was, which was that charm. That charm not only uh, helped take down a bunch of that Rob's health, who was doing some good damage on his own, uh, but took out the rest of Dario's H, uh, took out the rest of Dario's AP so that he wasn't able to really do uh, more damage to the Seymour or the Sephiroth. And uh, yeah, his health was just kept on dwindling from that point uh, onwards. He didn't get any healbacks after that moment. So uh, Dario, definitely super tanky, was healing back a lot, but from that charm point onwards, he didn't heal back at all, and that was just kind of like the slow death of that Dario. I agree 100%. It was looked like it was all Alcor in the beginning up until that charm, that berserk, like you said, you nailed it, and then that charm just turned it around. Uh, definitely have to give the, the key to the match to that charm, because that's what kind of turned around <laughs> the match. Yep. So, uh, GG's to both players, and uh, congrats to Chase versus all. GG's. All right, next up, we got the Glassy Animals, coached by Get Enthused Surf Taco with Dea, Dario the Crystalborn, and Seymour. Going up against Koshuho's Mundivigant Orit Warriors with Serges, uh, Glacella Summer, and uh, Astrius, the original Astrius. Uh, Chisa, you want to get this match started? Yeah, let's get into it. Uh, once again, from Genthu's side, we are seeing another Katana team. Like I think I missed the memo this week in terms of bringing a Katana team, because even on Koshuho's side, we have Astrius. So, <laughs> Katana's everywhere this week. Uh, but we come from Koshuho's side, we have the Water and Ice, a uh, strong duo, tons of VC synergy. Um, Summer Glaciella and Astrius on the same team, scary, scary pairing. Uh, it's going to be able to soak up a lot of physical damage there with the uh, Summer Glaciella aura. Uh, but coming off uh, from Enthu's side, the Katana team, Dario, we've seen Dario's tanking ability. So two very, very, very strong tanks on both sides uh, and two and, you know, some very capable damage dealers as well. I don't know how much the Seymour is going to be able to get done. I might be able to help out with some damage against the Surges, but uh, being elementally disadvantaged against the other two units is going to be rough. Uh, whereas the day up being uh, water or being magic damage is going to help out a little bit against this physical tanking. And here comes the first hit coming from the Astrius. Uh, reducing some of that slash res, so that's going to help out a little bit on the damage side. And then Glacella follows up, uh, doesn't land the stop, but does a little bit more damage. Surges is going to follow up with one last attack. Oh, oh almost, well, 3.5k, a little more than that, actually. Uh, Dario's down to half health. We know he can heal back, though, so let's see what happens. Uh, Seymour, well, that Surges tanked that Seymour pretty well. Um, Dea follows up with a slash <laughs> chain, though, and he did not take that one pretty well, though, unfortunately. <laughs> but we know Glacella is a strong tank, and Astrius is a major, pretty big damage dealer. Uh, he's only got 42 AP, so let's see what he can do. Another wow. cross destruction, um, uh, taking uh, Seymour back down to about half his health. And there's that triple drain that's going to heal Dario back up. This is uh, this is the issue we've seen with Dario before, where he could tank well and then triple drain plus a heal back. Uh, pretty powerful combo. 
Uh, but Astrius turn again down to 15 AP. Let's see, edge of no return. He removes the re-raise at least with the last little bit of AP. Seymour uh, <laughs> putting both units to sleep, unfortunately. So Glacial is taking a nap and Dia is going to be able to probably hit both of them. Uh, oh, no, just goes in with a single target, wakes up the Glacella. Uh, Dario gets to follow up. Let's see, he will do the limit burst. So let's see if he berserks now. Um, uh, almost 6k damage, no berserk though. Uh, but Astrius is down to 1 AP. Uh, he's gonna have to do a basic attack. Uh, didn't get a lot of AP back on that one. Glacella uh, has a little bit more AP, but she's more of the tank. I don't see her doing a lot of damage here, but let's see what she can pull off. Woven Claws, um, yeah, doesn't look like enough damage. Uh, Dea finishing off the Astrius, or I think he had his Courage still. And so there he goes, uh, no more Courage. And then Dario, uh, Yep, it's just going to be a slow bleed, I think, for this Glacella. I don't see how she's going to come back against three units. Uh, but let's see who gets the, the killing blow against her. Um, <laughs> she's a, she's always been a nuisance to me when I faced her in matches, so well, can't complain when one of these units will finish her off. <laughs> but, uh, let's see. <laughs> Healing power down. Sorry, Glacella. You're not going to heal back up that much. So Seymour has 7 AP. Goes for the Dark Ifrit to get her down to Courage. Dia, can you get the claim? Can you claim the victory here? She should be able to with a Drain Evocation, yes. Yep. Um, and that, the win goes to Enthused. And Chise, what do you think? Once again, Dario showing how good of a tank he is. The healbacks were really crucial in keeping him alive. Uh, but that being said, I almost wouldn't even say Dario was the star there. That Dea was putting out some serious, serious damage. Uh, being able to deal, you know, anywhere in the range of four to seven thousand per hit. Uh, Seymour, even himself, being elementally disadvantaged against uh, two of the units, was putting out some good damage as well. But uh, the Dario combined with the Dea for sure. You know, both being able to deal magic damage against a physical tank is definitely uh, you know a huge advantage over on Enthu's side. Uh, but still, the damage was very much on point and obviously the survivability was too because they were able to tank those hits from the Astros very well so I think uh, Kosho's team was incredibly strong uh, it's just Enthuse team tanked it incredibly well and uh, did some solid damage too I mean not really much else to say it was a pretty clean match uh, just very well tanked and a lot of damage yeah I agree I, I gotta say the the triple slash team uh they're very fine-tuned in terms of their agi, where it's, it didn't matter who was going, but by the third unit going, you got some pretty good damage to do. So it's pretty hard to to defend against all that damage, especially when they're landing sleeps and uh, and things like that. I, I don't know what I would give a key to the match to, because it was just uh, it's hard to say one thing turned around the match or anything like that. I would I would have to just say the 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 slash chaining on it. it was really well done. The sleep probably helped. I don't know if it really turned around the match, though. Lo at a loss for a key of the match, <laughs> but I'll have to just say the general the general well fine-tuned uh, agi for the, the slash chaining. Mm -hmm. Hey, that's better than what I had, because, yep, I, I'm, I'm going to steal yours then, because I, all I was going to say was just the damage that the uh, Dea was doing in the, you know, I, th I think that this team, uh, looking over uh, at the Enthus side, could easily uh, just not do enough damage. Like, it's not the most impressive damage dealers out there, but just how much damage the day was able to put out was uh, really impressive. So, but I think it was due to that, the chaining. I think it was due to the, the well-timed uh, agility uh, tuning, and I think that's the reason why the damage was, was there. So, I'm going to steal yours and say it was the agility tuning as well. <laughs> GG's to both players, and congrats to Enthused. Yes, GG's. All right, next up we got Ram9 and the Rock Boys showing Murmur, Chunak, and Prince Mont going against Logi's Logical Fallacy with Minwoo, A2, and Liarte. All right. So getting to the match, look at Ram9's team. Like, I don't, I didn't know what the cost is for this uh, format, but you know we have an MR, an SR, and like a year one or two UR. So I'm really loving this team from Ram9. I'm hoping they can, she can stand up against the uh, 
new hotness, which is A2, <laughs> especially with Minwoo as a support. That's going to be a very, very hard team to overcome. Uh, at least on in his benefit, the uh, Chunak, if he's able to land a hit on that Minwoo uh, with the elemental advantage and just how much damage the Chunak can do, might be able to take out the Minwoo in one hit. Uh, but that being said, it's going to be kind of hard, especially if the Liarte can get out there and land one of her like four or five status effects she has. Uh, if she has the charm or stop or anything, those are like debilitating ones, especially with how far away their initial positioning is. If a charm goes off on any of these units, they are not going to lose that charm for a long time and it could be super detrimental. So I am really interested in seeing how these initial turns play out. Uh, also because of the initial positioning, uh, tons of buffs being able to be applied. The A2 and the Minwoo are hasted over on Loji's side and the uh, Mont is hasted on Ram 9's side. But the Mont running backwards and using uh, the Treasure's Fortune buff, which I did not point out before, but that does mean that it's probably a very evasive angle coming out, uh, having the lock TMR on the Mont there. So I'm... Uh, that's one thing because I know A2 can be pretty accurate, so it'd be kind of scary to see if uh, this A2 is accurate enough to hit. She might have even been in range that turn, so I don't. It's the fact that she didn't hit, maybe she wasn't in range, but she might just not have the accuracy. But the first hit coming out from Chunak, doing about a fourth of her health. A limit burst right off the bat. Uh, then we got Liart, who is what? Uh, pretty accurate. Guess she's not in range, and maybe she doesn't have the accuracy to hit that Chunak. I'm not sure. But Mont running forward, uh, he's hasted. Uh, Minwoo, uh, everyone's hasted, so let's see what she's got. She's just, I think, moving to the side. And then you got Murmur charging, maybe another haste on Chunak. Yep, a fast cast. Uh, then you got A2. Let's see if she goes for the back line, if she can't hit that Chunak, if that's an issue here. Uh, she does move Ooh. to the side. She does miss the Chunak, but she does take out the Murmur in one hit and big damage against the Mont. Uh, he's the down to about a quarter health. Uh, Liarte finally gets in range, uh, just does about another 1k on top of it. Chunak, not sure if anyone has the hit here, but he does go after the A2. Does pretty good damage, taking her down to about a quarter health. Minwoo, uh, still in the back line. She's probably going to start channeling a haste on herself. She might be too far to help out that A2. Really hard. Mont doing what? Is that over 8k damage to her. It was. Um, but she just re-raised and she gets her agility up buff from that. So let's see. Up, oh, but Chunek gets to go again, and he will probably oh, oh. The, reflex. The, the, the the standard reflex. This wouldn't be War of the Visions without a reflex coming into play. <laughs> so now A2 gets to retaliate. Let's see what she gets to do. Um She's moving back. Oh. She hits the Chunak this time, takes him out, brings Mount down to Courage. So just that, like that. And she gets healed back up. Minwoo's not the, too far to heal her up that time. Man, that turned around quick. Uh, Liarte, can she take the kill for the... She does for the Whimsy Shop. She finishes <laughs> off the match. <laughs> wow, oh, Chisei, wow. take it away. <laughs> uh, you know what? I'm going to let you take that one. <laughs> like, I, I, my, my jaw's on the floor after that one. That was... Well, Crazy. I, I think there's only one thing to really say about this match, and that was that reflex. I that mean, it looked like it was Ram 9. He just he finished off that A2. She re-raised. He was about to finish her off with a following blow. That one reflex, and she turned around and did one one shot that Chunak and took Mont down to Courage. He was already low health, but still, it's just like what what should have been her final blow, she dodged and, and turned it around just like that. I think that's why she's can be a crazy good she's a crazy good without those kind of things but even better when she's able to do that you know um so that, that's that's my takeaway from it uh anything that happened before that point i don't think it even mattered except that it, was, <laughs> it looked like it was pretty much uh the evasion was on point for chunak um you know even liarte who has insane amount of accuracy seemed to run past him when uh and do nothing looked like ram nines to win at that point and one reflex, you know, that, that evil reaction seemed to turn that around, but. <laughs> no, I mean, you said everything. The fact that Liarte couldn't even hit the Chunak is what, one of the many things that surprised me the most, because yes, yeah, she is one of the most accurate units in the game. I think even her uh, master ability gives her an additional, like, crazy amount, like 50 or 100, something like that. It was, it's a I, lot. I think it's 100. I think it's 100 and 100 aquatic killer, which comes in very <laughs> 
<laughs> All the fishiness in this game. <laughs> yeah, that's right, that's right. <laughs> but yeah, the fact that she could not hit the Chunak was super surprising. That means, like you said, the evasion was on point. And like I said, I, so I, get, I think A2 was in range on the first couple of turns. She just didn't have the accuracy in the beginning because all the evasion buffs were online. But yeah, the fight uh, lasted long enough that uh, she was able to, that the buffs were able to wear off and that she was able to finally have the accuracy to hit the Chunak. Um, and like I said, the, the Mont dealing 8,000, 9,000 on an A2 of all things. That was also something that I never would have expected in a million years. Doing more damage than the Chunak was not expecting that. <laughs> Obviously, you know, well-built team on both sides. You know, the A2 Minwoo team is shown to be a, a, a force to be reckoned with. Very, very strong team, and Loji was smart to bring it, obviously. It worked out very well. Uh, but this team from Ram 9 also, very well-built. Very good job, and what against a lesser-prepared team would have easily swept the floor. And like I said, like you mentioned, the reflex, uh, you know, is part of the game. It's, it's something you gotta prepare for. That's why reaction block rates in the game, and even then, you can only get it to so high, but it's just part of the game, <laughs> one way or the other. So, uh, not taking away anything from Loji there, but uh, yeah, that reflex was huge. Absolute uh, GG's to both players, and uh, congrats to Loji. GG's and congrats. All right. Next up, we got Unhindered Soak and Destroy, who's showing the Surges. BB and Young Elda going against Kells and Feather Force. Sewing the Surges, McCloud, and Fang. She say, let's get into these Pierce teams. Yep. The uh, meta shifted in between these last couple matches, and we moved from Katana over to Pierce. So we got Pierce teams on both sides. Uh, on Kells' side, uh, importantly, we have the McCloud and the Fang uh, versus the Elda and the Surges. So the Fang having the Elemental Avengers against the Elda is going to be a very tough one for Unhindered to overcome. I mean, Elda is a great unit, but so is Fang. So uh, I'm uh, hoping that uh, Elda has some tricks up his sleeve to be able to deal with this Fang. And another thing that's going to be very important, as mentioned in every single video with Fang, is making sure that she doesn't get her limit burst off on a squishy unit that's surrounded by other units. Because man, that does that takes out all of your defenses. So, oh, going off the Quicken strategy from this Phoebe. So the Surges is going out right away to be able to deal some damage. Yeah, so doing a vacuum slash against the Kells' Surges uh, to get things started. Bang, doing haste to get a little quicker into the action. Uh, Elda in the back corner, taking his time with some buffs, moving on up. And then McCloud, uh, I'm sorry, Surges first, uh, attacking the Surges again for about 1k damage. Uh, then McCloud uh, comes in, split shots, so going uh -huh. for a missile move. Uh, big damage. He must have had to bypass that Pierce resist that maybe uh, Unhindered has on his side. Uh, Fang comes in, does a blitz too, and takes away that Surges. It looks like Phoebe's channeling a spell on him, so a little Ooh. too... Oh, a Curata. A little too late on that. Um, but here comes Surges, uh, has time to do another buff. Uh, positions on the top of the hill. Uh, Elda uh, should be able to reach him this turn and does a Lion's Drain. Uh, decent damage on that surges. McCloud comes in oh. and, uh, yep, one shots that Phoebe. She is not long for the world. Uh, so now we got Elda versus the world. Fang uh, Blitz uh, can't get past the shield though. Uh, but here comes a Pierce Chain. Uh, still, the shield's up. Oh. going again um that haste coming in big doing about 4k damage elda uh let's see i don't know if he's going to be able to do an aoe because of that obstacle that's in the way so he's just doing a i don't know if this is hitting both i think it's just hitting the surges uh yep uh, uh tanked pretty well for a limit burst attack uh he's still alive with about a quarter health uh wow mcleod doing some good damage there and putting the immobilize uh, and the doom. <laughs> here we go. So uh, uh, it looks like unhindered is doomed here. Uh, <laughs> Fang taking time to go with a heal, I guess. Uh, unhindered uh, trying to get rid of that surges. Can't can't kill him though. So McCloud doing a basic attack won't kill him. Uh, surges with no H, uh, no AP. Uh, not able to finish it off or even proc the re-raise. Fang going with an Esper evocation. Uh, should 
bring the re-raised Elda back. Uh, the Doom is gone. At least there's that. <laughs> so let's see if Elda could do anything with that little perk. No, he can't kill the Surges. So now it's still three against one. Oh man, uh, like I mentioned in the beginning, the, I knew the elemental advantage was going to be hard to overcome. In addition to that, it looks like both sides, and I might be wrong, but it looks like both sides built up quite a bit of pierce resistance from the amount of damage that the Elda was able to deal to all of Kel's team was pretty low considering how much damage Elda can do. And so for the damage that the McLeod was able to do over on Kel's side, and he had to resort to using a missile attack. So I do think that they probably both expected this team from each other. I don't know if Unhindered uh, especially expected the Fang, because like I said, running Elda into Fang is definitely going to be hard with the elemental advantage. But uh, it looks like they both had some, uh, at least some pierce resistance in case the other team brought this. So uh, the match itself, you know, like I said, it was really rough. Uh, the surges getting out there and uh, being quickened from the beginning. Uh, might have been to take some heat off the Elda so he had more time to do some buffs, or maybe it was meant to be on the Elda in the beginning, I'm not entirely sure, but uh, either way, like the Surges being picked off in the beginning, and then the Phoebe being picked off with the Binding Javelin, just meant that it was Elda versus all three of them, and yeah, once again, he's good, but going against an elementally disadvantaged Fang, and then two other very strong units that were putting up some good damage themselves, uh, was a really rough uh, match for a Hindu. Yeah, agreed. I could see Unhindered, I think, was going for a, like a get the surges out in front with the with the uh, Sweetheart Eldira TMR to give him extra movement and then the Quicken to get him further out, but that just opened it up to get slaughtered. Um, Phoebe's cure was just, just a little too slow. If she got that cure off, he might have been able to tank a few more hits. Um, Unfortunately, when he went down and and Phoebe was uh, an open target because she had to run forward to keep quickening him, uh, once she was down, it was just too hard for Elda to pass up, especially like you pointed out with that elemental disadvantage. So despite of how well the pierce resist was there, Kel's bringing a few more other attack types into the mix was pretty much the best move. And I think I would give the key to the match to that to, to be able to pick off those high pierce resist units off easily in the beginning. So Yeah, and I think, like you said, I, I think the initial positioning also probably mess up with a hindered side because if what you said uh, what you said makes a lot of sense because i think maybe he was trying to use uh surges as like a disruptor to stop some of the buffs from kel's side but they were both positioned on the opposite corners wasn't able to disrupt any buffs fang was still able to get off two or three buffs in the beginning so surges unfortunately just ran into the middle was and, and died essentially so but yeah i am with you i think that picking off those uh pick, being able to pick off especially the phoebe uh so that she's not able to get her full life off or getting cures on the elda early off in the match i think was pretty key to winning this match. I would give the key of the match to that uh, McLeod taking out that Phoebe. <laughs> GG's to both players and congrats to Kells. GG's. Final match, we've got Isvar with Elda Enthusiast League with Fang, Minwu, and Surges going up against Funded with Elsarel, Venera, and Knight of Ruin Stern. She say, let's get this last one underway. Let's start. And right into the uh, match, no no pause there. So, Fang, Minwu, Surges, very, very strong team. You know, so usually see uh, uh, A2 there. Sometimes it's like one of the strongest teams, but Fang being a very, very strong unit, as we just saw in the last match, uh, against uh, this team from Funded, who, uh, you know, has had some unfortunate run ins, but we've seen the damage that this team can output is insane. This team always is basically hitting like cap damage whenever it gets in range to be able to hit. So uh, the haste getting online for both the Elsarel and the Knight of Ruin Stern, and then the haste uh, coming out from Isvar's side onto the Fang. So both the main carries on both sides are all hasted up, and the uh, damage should get underway starting right now. Elsarel going after the surges. Uh... He seems to be a common first target for most teams. Uh, then Knight of Ruin Stern coming in to follow up with some damage, going for the Limit Burst. Uh, love this animation. Uh, it's 7k, not quite enough to kill the Surges though. Um, Minwu is hasted up now. Surges, he gets, let's see, one more move. Oh. Does uh, the Shield Protects Stern, does about 3k against Elsarel. Vinera comes in to finish him off. A little bit poison for for a little extra salt in the wound. Uh, but here comes Fang. Oh. Uh, takes out the Vinera in one hit and big damage against the Stern. Uh, Minu is going to come up. See, no buffs because they're both still hasted. 
Uh, Elserel, how can she respond? Let's see. Uh, Good night, Rumble. Does she put Minwu down in the ground? Let's see. <laughs> no. no. Uh, tanked very well. Um, about 3k damage to her. She's coming up and charging another spell. Can Stern do Swiss Ooh. Slash? And takes her out, though. So now we got a two versus one, but the one is a Hasted Fang with 104 oh. AP. Who can do moves like that? Uh, <laughs> More importantly, uh, let's see. Oh, well, she's got a shield, and Elzebel was only able to do a basic attack, and she's got more of that move. So uh, <laughs> that's all I got. <laughs> she said, what, yeah. what, no. like, what can you say? <laughs> no, yeah. I mean, not much to say. I mean, what I said in the beginning still rang true. This, um, you know, on this side, very, very strong team with uh, Fang, Minwoo, Sergius. Uh, able to put out some really solid damage and like you mentioned at one point in the fight I was actually surprised how well that Minwoo tanked because uh, this team from Funded brings out the damage uh, as we even saw against the Surges even though it wasn't cap damage it was still a good you know 7,000 from the Knight of Ruin Stern and I think another 4,000 or so from the Elseral so um, really solid damage coming out from Funded's side but one thing that was like a I don't know if I want to give it play of the match but it's, it was close enough that I might have to was that Sergius first, and I think only attack he was able to do before he died, uh, removed haste from both of the carries. And I definitely felt that speed difference later on with both the Minwoo and the Fang being hasted up. Even on that last turn there, Fang did her dual smite, Elsrael had one attack before an Avru and Stern went, and then she was able to do another one. So the speed advantage was definitely not over <laughs> on Funded side. The Fang just bringing that damage in spades so Isvar's team was incredibly well built uh, to be able to tank up damage from funded side and also deal it out uh, there's a lot of times too where the fang was not being targeted by attacks and I don't know if she had some a bit of evasion there or if the other two units might have had some hate or she had some hate down I might have missed some initial buffs that would have given her maybe some hate down that I missed but either way uh, there were some times where I was surprised that the fang wasn't being caught up in some of those AoEs so very well done not, not really much else to say really well built team yeah, I would agree with everything you said. I'd have to say also, like, at the very end, when it was a 2v1. Back in the day, when you would have your units positioned like that, where they would be clearly outside the classic AoE range, it might have been Funded's favor, but Fang being able to do those two-hit single-target thing where you could hit someone... I don't know. It's just absolutely <laughs> ridiculous. Uh, especially, and then she had haste and, and plenty of AP. I think you, you've already touched on her her speed advantage by that point. Um, she was able to clean that up with just doing that a few times, uh, a couple times to clear it out. And yeah, the speed advantage, maybe with a little help from that Surges move, is definitely the key to the match there at the end. Yep. So GG's to both players, and congrats to Isvar. GG's. All right. After another explosive week of matches, here are the standings. So in first place, still have Surf Taco at a solid 8-0 record. In second place, we have Ram9 and Kells, both with six points each. In third place, we have Isvar and Koshiho with five points. In fourth place, we have Loji and Alcor. And currently at this time, uh, Loji is the last playoff spot uh, holder. In fifth place, we have Unhindered and Chase vs. All with three points. And then in sixth place, we have Funded with one point. So at this point in time, like I said, this, we're approaching the last week. Uh, so two things I wanted to make sure to put into uh, put into your mind is make sure you get that extra savings point. I still I don't know if some of the people here that we don't have recorded have used all the units. Uh, please, if you can, uh, report that to me if you know that you've used all of your units uh, to either me or Numero. Uh, but uh, if you haven't, you know if you can use them in the last week, it's just as good as getting a win. And if you can get a win with that unit also, hey, that's that's two points, so even better. And then also wanted to point out that it looks like in terms for the last playoff spot, I would have to go look at the head-to-heads, but it is pretty locked in where it seems like Loji and Alcor are pretty much battling for that last slot there. It is possible for Unhindered to also get there, uh, but also you'll notice that Loji has not claimed the extra standings point. So if Loji wins and gets the extra standings point, he is definitely locked in for a playoff spot there. Unhindered and Alcor would both need for Loji to lose to have a chance for that playoff spot. Fortunately for Chase versus All and Funded, I do not think that they will have a chance unless Loji doesn't go for that extra point. But I think that our playoff spots are pretty much locked in here. Thank yep. you for having me. <laughs> See you next week. <laughs> See you next week for the final week of uh, the playoff season. So thanks right. again and take care.